Hello and welcome to Replacement Player Baseball. Today, the Cubs are coming into play on a four-game winning streak and looking to complete a three-game sweep of the Arizona Diamondbacks here at Wrigley Field. For today's game, we are going to see a little different lineup taking shape as Nelson Cruz is going to be asked to play right field today. I believe that, yeah, he knows how, where right field is. Thyro Estrada will be playing third base. And Mike Tauschman. Is he actually... Oh, that was wrong. Is he actually a better center fielder? Let's just see here. He's a nine in center field, and Springer, well, Springer's sitting out. Where, oh, Santana, that's the other one. Yeah, so Tauschman is the better center fielder, and Amaya is still going to be doing the catching. And so we're going to see a lineup today, which is going to include Horner, Santana, Rizzo, Correa, Cruz, Estrada, Amaya, Tauschman, and Suter batting ninth. For the Diamondbacks, Zach Gallen will be on the mound. He's making start number 20. With a 6-12 record, he has a 306 ERA and a 111 whip, and his record would not seem to really adequately reflect his effectiveness so far this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alec Thomas will be making the start in center field leading off for the Diamondbacks, followed by Pavin Smith, Kettle Marte, Seth Beer, Carson Kelly, Nick Ahmed, Corey Ray, Eduardo Escobar, and Zach Gallen batting ninth. It is 69 degrees, wind blowing out to left at 10 MPH. And it is time to get today's game underway. The Cubs entering play today, 15 games up on the second place St. Louis Cardinals and having won seven of their last ten. After today's game, the Cincinnati Reds are coming into town for four more games to fill out this homestand. Suter now on the mound with a two and one count, delivering the pitch. Thomas grounds it back toward the mound. Suter has it, throwing to first, and Alec Thomas speeding down the line somehow beats that out for an infield single. So now Pavin Smith is the batter. We're gonna throw over to first, see if, yeah, Suter Fires over there, not in time. Pitch to the batter, let's see what happens. The runner does not go, that's strike one, a fastball right down the middle. We're going to pitch out on this pitch and see if we can catch Thomas trying to steal. There's a pitch out, the throw goes down to second, he is dead to right. Nice play by Miguel Amaya, throwing out the base runner for the first out of the inning. So, now, a two strike count because somehow Pavin Smith managed to swing and miss at the pitch out. And Suter now working. Here comes the 2 2 count and the delivery. And a drive into right. That one's going to be deep all the way to the wall. Man, it's a good thing we threw out that runner at second. Pavin Smith going for extra bases. He's going to slide into second with a double. One out here in the top of the first inning. So now with Smith in scoring position. Marte is the next batter. One out, one man on. Throw back to over to second. Make sure and keep him close. Having Smith not exactly the base running threat that Alec Thomas was. Here's a 2-2 count and the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. Suter gets the punch out for the second out of the inning. That was a slider that slid right under his back for out number two. Beer now the batter with two outs and the runner on second. Suter facing Beer with a 2-2 count. Here is the pitch, and a liner in the left. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Rounding third and stopping is Pavin Smith. So Beer with a single, and that gives the Diamondbacks runners on the corners with two outs. Carson Kelly now the batter. Two outs, two men on top of the first inning. Suter still working. One ball count. Grounded toward first. Rizzo has it. He steps on the base. That'll be three unassisted to end the inning. So Suter gets out of the jam. The Diamondbacks strand two, they do not score. We're going to the bottom of the first of a scoreless affair. 
And now, Nico Horner leading off the Cubs against Zach Gallen here in the top of the first, bottom of the first inning. Horner's batting average is up to 342 now on the season with 10 home runs. Here's the two strike count and the pitch to Nico Horner. He is looking for the sign. Here's the delivery. There's a pop up to right. Coming in is the right fielder. He looks up and makes the play for out number one. Danny Santana now the batter with one out, nobody on. Here's the one ball count and the pitch to Santana. And he grounds it toward first. Picked up, thrown to first. The pitcher is covering, that's out number two. Now Rizzo is the batter. Two outs, nobody on. One and two is the count. Here's the pitch to Anthony Rizzo. And he swings and misses for strike three. So that will end the inning. We go to the top of the second of a scoreless ball game. Nick Ahmed leading off against Brent Suter in the top of the second inning. One and two is the count. Suter delivering the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. That's a sinker for the first out of the inning. And, and um, Nick Ahmed heading back to the dugout as Suter strikes him out. Second of the game. Suter now facing Corey Ray. One out, nobody on. Here comes the one strike count and the pitch. And a pop up to left. Chasing is Santana back toward the corner. He looks up and he makes the running catch for out number two. Danny Santana pulling that one in. And now with two outs, nobody on. Eduardo Escobar is the next batter. Suter working. Here comes the first pitch. Escobar grounding it toward third, a high chopper. The throw goes over to first and that'll end the inning. So the Diamondbacks go down in order. We go down to the bottom of the second of a 0-0 ball game. Carlos Correa now facing Zach Yellen in the bottom of the second inning. One and two is the count. Here's the pitch to Correa. He lines that one into right field. That's going to be slapped into right for a opposite field single, leading off the bottom of the second inning. So the Cubs with their first base hit of this ball game, and that brings up Nelson Cruz. Cruz with 15 home runs on the season, facing Gallon. Bottom of the second, runner on first, nobody out. Here comes the first pitch to Nelson Cruz. And Cruz drives it into center, coming in fast is Alec Thomas. He makes the play, the sliding catch for out number one. Alec Thomas screwed up a very similar play in yesterday's game. However, this time he comes up with the catch for the first out of the inning. Estrada now the batter with one out and one man on. Estrada facing Gallon with a one and two count. Here it comes. Grounder back toward the mound. Gallon has it. His only play is at first, and Estrada beats it out for an infield single. So Estrada hustling down the line to beat that throw, and now Miguel Amaya is the batter. With one out, two men on. Gallon facing Amaya here in the bottom of the second inning. Cubs with their best opportunity to score so far in this ballgame. Here comes the two ball count and the pitch to Miguel Amaya. Here it comes. Popped up, center field, shallow. Alec Thomas coming in fast. He makes the running catch for out number two. There was no chance for the runners to tag up and advance there. And it'll bring up Mike Tauschman. With two men on and two out, Tauschman facing Gallon in the bottom of the second inning. Here comes the full count payoff pitch. The runners are going. It's a swing and a miss, and the inning is over. So the Cubs do not score. They strand two. We go to the top of the third of a 0-0 ball game. Zach Gallen now leading off the Diamondbacks against Brent Suter in the top of the third. Two strikes is the count. Suter looking to record the punch out. There's a grounder up the middle. The shortstop, Correa has it. He throws to first. They get him by a couple of steps from up number one. Next up is Alec Thomas with one out, nobody on. Here comes the pitch to Thomas. There's a liner in the gap in right center field. That's going all the way to the wall. One hop off the Ivy, Thomas rounding second, heading for third. He is going to have a triple with one out here in the third inning. Alec Thomas just scorched that ball out into the right center field gap. So now with a runner 90 feet away, Pavin Smith is the batter. One out top of the third inning. Suter working. Here comes the 2-2 pitch to Pavin Smith. And a pop-up, short center field, a diving play. So the throw comes home, and that is going to allow the run to score. You know, Tauschman definitely made the right decision there. He got the second out of the inning. But when he had to lay out to make that catch, there was no way he was going to throw the runner out home. Tauschman, to his credit, did react quickly. However, 
There's a now a one nothing Diamondback lead. That's going to be credited as a sacrifice RBI for Pavin Smith. So now Suter facing Marte with two outs, nobody on. Full count. Here comes the pitch. Strike three, strike three is called on the outside corner. So Suter strikes him out to end the inning. We go to the bottom of the third. It's a one nothing ball game. Suter now leading off against Gallon in the bottom of the third. One and two is the count. Gallon with the delivery. And a swing and a miss for strike three. That was a changeup. That pitch isn't even fair when you throw it to the opposing pitcher. So now Nico Horner is the batter. One out, nobody on. Gallon working with a one ball count. Here's the pitch to Nico Horner. And he grounds it up the middle. Short stop has it. Throwing over to first. That's going to be out number two. Danny Santana now batting with two outs and nobody on. Gallon working with a one and two count. Here's the pitch to Santana. And a swing and a miss to end the inning. So Gallon sets him down in order. We go to the top of the fourth. It's still 1-0 here at Wrigley Field. Suter facing Beer to lead off the top of the fourth. 1-2 and two is the count. Suter delivers. There's a pop-up on the infield. The shift was on. The third baseman, Estrada, makes the play. That is out number one. Carson Kelly now the batter with one out, nobody on. Suter facing Kelly with a one-strike count. Here's the delivery. Liner up the middle, that's going to be a base hit. So that's going to be a one-out single for Carson Kelly as he stops at first with a base hit. Nick Ahmed now the batter. One out, one man on. Suter facing Ahmed with a one-strike count. Here it comes. Grounded up the middle. Short stop has it. Throw to second. Relay to first. That is a beautiful 6-4-3 double play. Nice execution by the Cubs infield defense to turn the double play and end the inning. We go now to the bottom of the fourth. It is still 1-0 in favor of Arizona. Anthony Rizzo facing Zach Gallon in the bottom of the fourth. Here's a one-strike count. Here is the pitch to Rizzo, and he pops it up. Left center field, deep but playable. The left fielder has it. He calls for it and makes the catch for out number one. Carlos Correa now the back with one out, nobody on Gallon facing Correa with a 2-2 count. Here is the pitch. And Correa slaps it on the ground. First baseman has it. Flips to the pitcher covering. And that is out number two. Nelson Cruz now the batter with two outs and nobody on. Cruz facing Gallon with a one ball count. Here it comes. And he pops it up behind third base. Going over. The third baseman makes the play. And that is over for that inning. We go to the top of the fifth. Still 1-0 in favor of Arizona. Courtney Ray leading off against Brent Suter in the top of the fifth inning. 3-1 and one is the count. Suter delivers the pitch. A grounder toward the mound. The pitcher picks it up, throws over to first. Good. A slow throw. And that is going to be an infield single for Corey Ray. He was hustling down that line. So now, with a runner on first, nobody out. Eduardo Escobar comes up to the plate. He's 0-1 for 1 today. Facing off against Suter here in the top of the fifth inning. Here's the first pitch. Grounder toward short. Picked up. Thrown to second. No relay to first, however. The double play is broken up at second base. And so now on the fielder's choice, there is one out and a runner on first. So it looks like Corey Ray actually got injured breaking up that double play. Maybe he took a cleat to the knee from Nico Horner. I'm not sure. But he's coming out of the ball game. And now the pitcher, Zach Gallon, is going to bat with one out, one man on. Probably a sacrifice situation right here. Let's see what Suter does. Suter delivering the first pitch. The bunt is laid down. Rizzo has it. He charges, flips to Horner, covering first, and that is out number two. The runner is successfully sacrificed over to second. That's Eduardo Escobar. Brings up Alec Thomas with two outs, and the runner on second, top of the fifth inning. Suter working with a three and one count. Here's the pitch. Popped up to left. Chasing is Santana on the run. He makes the play to end the inning. So the Cubs cause the Diamondbacks to strand the runner. There's no score. We go to the bottom of the fifth of a 1-0 ball game. Eduardo, excuse me, Thyra Estrada leading off against Zach Gallon here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Here's the 2-2 count and the pitch. And Estrada slaps it on the ground towards second. The throw goes over to first, and that is out number one. Next up, Miguel Amaya. One out, nobody on. Amaya waiting for the pitch. 
And there's a drive to deep right field. Going back is the right fielder. He's going to make the running play on the warning track for out number two. So now Tauschman is the batter with two outs and nobody on. Gallon working. First pitch to Mike Tauschman. Here it comes. And Tauschman pops it up to short right field. This time, again, a running catch will be made, but coming in, and that is going to end the inning. We go now to the top of the sixth. It's a 1-0 Cub lead, or Cub deficit, I'm sorry. Suter facing Pavin Smith here in the top of the sixth inning. 2-2 two -two is the count. Suter delivers, grounder toward first, picked up by Rizzo. Oh, and he boots it, and he cannot recover. The runner is going to be safe at first on an error. Anthony Rizzo with an uncharacteristic fielding error over at first, and that'll bring up Kevin Marte. With a runner on first, nobody out. Top of the sixth inning, Cubs already down by one. Here is the first pitch, and there's a pop-up behind second base. Short right field, actually. Horner going back and pulling it in for out number one. Suter now facing Beer with one out and a runner on first. Suter working with a one-strike count. And there's a pop-up to short center field. Coming in is Tauschman. He's going to have a line on it. He makes the catch for out number two. No chance for the runner to tag up in advance there. And it'll bring up Carson Kelly with two outs. The runner's still on first here in the top of the sixth inning. Suter working. Full count. Here it comes. That's low for ball four. So the walk is issued. And that puts runners on first and second with two outs. And that is going to prompt action in the Cub bullpen. Which means that... Where are we at in the lineup? Well, we got righty, lefty, switch hitter, and then the pitcher who we might see a pinch hitter as well. I don't know. But this seems like a great situation where we could warm up Junior Fernandez. Oh, I'm sorry. Joe Jimenez. I've got the wrong... I've got my J's all crossed up. We're going to visit the mound and talk to Suter, and he says, I feel good, I really do. He just issued his first walk of the ball game, actually. Now, with two men on and two outs in the top of the sixth, Suter working to Ahmed with a 1-1 count. Here it comes. Line down the left field line. That's going to drive in some runs. Heading toward the corner is Santana. He gets it back into the cutoff, man. One run is in. The trailing runner stopped at third. It's now a 2-0 Diamondback lead. That is an RBI double for Nick Ahmed, and it brings up Rojas with two outs and two men on in the top of the sixth inning. And the next batter is Eduardo Escobar. Suter is going to, yeah, Suter is going to face Rojas here in the top of the sixth. Lefty versus lefty, and then if he can't get him out, I guess we'll see what happens here. Two balls is the count. Here's the pitch. Grounded back toward the mound. The pitcher has it. The throw over to first, and they he beats it out for an infield single. I feel like we've seen four infield singles in this game. That's going to allow the run to score. And now it's a 3-0 Diamondback lead in the top of the sixth inning. And Suter really struggling to get out of this sixth inning. There's now runners on the corners with two outs. Suter facing Escobar in the top of the sixth. So, we could intentionally walk Escobar. Who would they likely send up as a pinch hitter for the pitcher spot if we did that? They would probably send up Dalton Varsha, although they could send up Cole Calhoun, which would also be its own kind of problem. Suter facing Escobar in the top of the sixth inning with two outs and two men on. Escobar versus Suter, and I feel like Suter, because Jimenez is not ready, we just need, Suter needs to get out of this inning. So we're going to pitch to Escobar, and then if they if he gets a, on base and we have to pitch to Gallon, then we'll decide what to do with the pinch hitter after that. So 2-2 two, two count. Here comes the pitch. A swing and a miss for strike three. So that's going to end the inning. Suter gets out of the jam, but not before two runs score. The Diamondbacks now take a 3-0 lead into the bottom of the sixth inning. And now, Suter is going to be pinch hit for him. We are going to send 
let's see here. So Gallum is the righty, which means that Bryce Harper, I mean, so I've got Posey, Bryant, Springer, and Harper all sitting on the bench waiting for their turn to bat. I think that probably, you know, to be perfectly honest, the guy to lead off the inning with is probably Bryant. We'll let him pinch hit. And then we'll just kind of see where this goes. Chris Bryant coming up to the plate. He got off to a slow start. His batting average is up to 240 with five home runs so far on the season. Gallon facing Bryant at the bottom of the sixth inning. Here comes the first pitch to Chris Bryant. And Bryant knocks it on the ground towards second. The throw goes over to first, and that's out number one. Next up, Nico Horner. He is 0 for 2 today, facing Gallon in the bottom of the sixth inning. One out, nobody on him. Full count pitch to Nico Horner. Here it comes. Grounded towards second again. The throw goes to first, and that is out number two. And now Danny Santana is the batter. we got to make sure that Jimenez is ready to come in. So Gallon facing Santana. Two outs, nobody on, bottom of the sixth inning. Full count pitch to Santana. Gallon delivers. And strike three is called on the outside corner. So the Cubs do not score. They're retired in order. We go to the top of the seventh of a 3-0 ball game. And now Jimenez is going to come in. We're actually going to leave Thyro Estrada in this game. Bryant is going to just strictly be the pinch hitting performance. So Joe Jimenez coming in out of the Cub bullpen. He has thrown 37 in the third innings. With a 3-1 record, he has 7 walks, 49 strikeouts, and a 2.89 ERA. He's going to face Zach Gallon, and then the top of the Diamondbacks lineup in the top of the seventh inning. Jimenez, with a 1-2 and two count, facing off with Gallon. Here comes the pitch. And strike three is called on the outside corner, so that is out number one. Next up, Alec Thomas with one out and nobody on. Jimenez working with a two-strike count. Here it comes. Popped up behind shortstop. Correa going out. He makes the catch in short left center field for out number two. And now Pavin Smith is the batter. He is one for two with an RBI today. Facing off with Jimenez. Two outs. Nobody on. Top of the seventh inning. Three balls is the count. And that is ball four low. So the walk is issued. Jimenez missing low with a slider. It brings up Kettle Marte. Two outs, one man on top of the seventh inning. And we are, in fact, going to warm up another reliever, which is going to be, let's see here. So this is the seventh inning. We have the eighth and the ninth that we need to pitch. And the next reliever out of the bullpen I guess the, you know, this would be a, a Tariq Skubal situation, I feel like. So we're going to warm him up to potentially pick pitch in the eighth inning. Two outs, one man on top of the seven. Jimenez working to Marte. We're going to visit the mound, and he says, I feel as good as ever. All right, good to know. Jimenez working with the two ball count. Here it comes. Popped up center field, should be routine. Tauschman shading over toward left center, making the play to end the inning. So the Diamondbacks strand a runner, they do not score. We are going to the bottom of the seventh of a three nothing ball game. Gallon facing Rizzo in the bottom of the seventh. Cubs need to get on the board here. There's been a significant power outage so far in this game with only two base hits so far. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention our seventh inning stretch today was in fact led by Brant Brown. Here is the pitch to Anthony Rizzo. That is high for ball four, so Rizzo takes the walk. He heads down to first, and now Carlos Correa is the batter. Runner on first, nobody out. Gallon facing Correa. Two and two is the count. Here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. That is out number one. That was a big curve ball. And strikeout number six for Zach Gallon brings up Nelson Cruz with one out and one man on in the bottom of the seventh inning. Cruz facing Gallon, and this is probably the situation where we need to pinch hit with Bryce Harper. We are going to 
and let Bryce Harper play right field for the remainder of this ball game. And he is going to be pinch hitting against Zach Gallen in the bottom of the seventh inning with one out, one man on. Gallen working, first pitch to Bryce Harper, and it gets away. So Rizzo is gonna head down to second on the wild pitch. Oh, they're crediting that as a pass ball on Carson Keller, okay. So Harper now facing Gallon with a runner in scoring position and one out. Gallon working with a full count. Here's the pitch. Line down the left field line. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Rizzo rounding third. He's heading home. The throw comes home. The slide and the throw is late. So Bryce Harper delivering with the pinch hit RBI single. And now he has his 40th RBI of the season. This is now a 3-1 to one ball game in favor of Arizona. Bringing up Thyra Estrada now. With one out, one man on. Gallon facing Estrada here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Gallon sitting on 89 pitches at this time. Here comes the one and two count and the pitch to Estrada. And he grounds it up the middle. Shortstop has it. The throw goes directly over to first for out number two. There was no chance of getting Harper on that play. So now Miguel Amaya is the bat. With two outs and the runner on second here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Amaya with a chance to drive in another run. Here comes the 3-0 count and the pitch to Miguel Amaya, and that is low for ball four. So Miguel Amaya drawing the walk, and it brings up Mike Tauschman. I need to make sure that Scooball is warmed up and ready to go. Tauschman is going to face a new Diamondback pitcher, the reliever Trevor McGill, coming out of the bullpen. He has thrown 38 innings, walked 25, Struck out 35 with a 3.79 ERA. The Cubs are down by two. There are two outs and two men on in the bottom of the seventh inning. McGill facing Tauschman. Here comes the full count pitch. Tauschman standing in. Here's the delivery. And it's high for ball four. Tauschman didn't even have to think about that one. That was a helmet high fastball. And now the bases are loaded. Joe Jimenez is coming up to the plate and we're going to get a pinch hitter. And this pinch hitter is going to be Buster Posey. Posey is coming in to pinch hit for the pitcher spot with the bases loaded and two outs at the bottom of the seventh inning. McGill facing Posey in a critical situation here in the bottom of the seventh. Posey has five home runs, 31 RBIs, and a 267 batting average so far on the season. McGill facing Posey, Cubs down by two. Here's a two strike count and the pitch, and Posey lines it in the left field corner. That's gonna drive in a couple of runs. One run is in, two runs are coming in. The throw comes home, it's late, and Buster Posey has just tied up this ball game with a two run RBI single in the bottom of the seventh inning. 3-3 tie here at Wrigley Field. Clutch base hit by Buster Posey right there, and it brings up Nico Horner. Still two outs, two men on base. Tie ball game here in the bottom of the seventh. Miguel facing Horner. Here comes the one strike count and the pitch to Nico Horner, and it's popped up on the infield. That is probably gonna do it. The second baseman calls for it, and the catch is made to end the inning. But not before the Cubs score three times to forge a 3-3 tie going into the top of the eighth inning. And now, Buster Posey is gonna stay in at catcher. Bryce Harper is gonna stay in in right field, and Tariq Skubal is coming in to pitch for the Cubs. And he is going to face Cole Calhoun. We're also going to warm up Well, so how rested is Diaz? He's 69%. We'll see how this game plays out. We're not going to start warming anybody up just yet, but... Skubal is on the mound. He's facing the lefty Cole Calhoun to lead off the top of the eighth inning. Calhoun, for his part, has 17 home runs, 39 RBIs on the season. Skubal working with 73 and two-thirds innings thrown, 24 walks, 92 strikeouts, and a 281 ERA. Scooball working with a two and one count. Here is the pitch to Cole Calhoun. And it's a grounder toward first. Rizzo scoops it up and steps on the base for out number one. 
Carson Kelly now the batter with one out, nobody on. Screwball working with a one and one count. Here is the pitch to Carson Kelly, and it's a grounder towards second. Horner has this one. He throws to first for out number two. Next up is Nick Ahmed with two outs and nobody on. Ahmed is one for three today. Screwball working with a one ball count. Here comes the pitch. And a pop-up to left. Chasing toward the line is Santana. He looks up and he makes the play to end the inning. So the Cubs retire the Diamondbacks in order. We go to the bottom of the eighth of a 3-3 tie. Danny Santana leading off against Trevor McGill here in the bottom of the eighth inning. So the Diamondbacks are going to send the 7-8-9 batters up to bat in the top of the ninth inning. So we're going to warm up Edwin Diaz. Tariq Skubal got through that inning on nine pitches, by the way, in case anybody was paying attention. Edwin Diaz is going to be warmed up in the event that we would take a lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Santana facing McGill. Tie ball game leading off the bottom of the eighth. Here comes the 2-2 count and the pitch to Danny Santana. And he pops it up short left field. Coming in is the left fielder. He makes the play. Oh, and he drops it. He drops it, and Santana is safe on first. So suddenly the Cubs have the go-ahead run on base, and Anthony Rizzo now is the batter. Carson Kelly, again, just a really good catcher. I hate to try to run on him, and now Andrew Chafin has come out of the Diamondback bullpen. He is throwing... 39 and a third innings so far this year. 12 walks, 43 strikeouts, and a 4.58 ERA. Chafin facing Rizzo. With the go-ahead run on first, nobody out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Rizzo waiting for the full count pitch. That is low for ball four. And now there are runners on first and second with nobody out in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Carlos Correa is the batter. And now we're going to be looking to pull off a double steal. We're going to do this pitch by pitch and see what happens. Shafe and working. Here comes the first pitch. Inside, that was a sinker for ball one. So now Shafe and facing Correa with a one ball two. Here comes the next pitch. That is low, a changeup for ball two. Shafe and now facing Correa. Two ball count. Here comes the pitch. That was a ball, that was ball three. Apparently that was a little bit low or inside. So now he's facing Correa with nobody out and two runners already on base. Let's see what this pitch is. That is a fast, no, a sinker, excuse me, a sinker for a strike. So strike one. Kind of set Diaz down there. He's prepared for the next inning. Chafin facing Correa now. With the three and one count, two men on base. Here comes the pitch. And there's a foul ball, so that's strike two. And now it's a full count. Chafin working. I mean, anything could happen here, right? We're not going to try to steal with a full count. But let's see what happens. Another foul ball. So Correa continuing to battle up there. And now Chafin working again with a full count. And that is low for ball four. So the bases are now loaded. And the Cubs have the go-ahead run 90 feet away. Bryce Harper is coming up to the plate. He is one for one with an RBI today. He is facing the new Diamondback pitcher, Silvino Bracco. Bracco has thrown 34 innings, walked 15, struck out 37, with a 529 ERA. The righty Bracco will face the lefty Harper in the bottom of the eighth inning tie ball game. Cubs trying to break through for the lead here in the bottom of the eighth. Here comes the pitch to Bryce Harper. He is looking for the sign. There it is. That is high for ball one. Apparently, we can put this back on one pitch ball because now a one and two count. That strike three called. Harper cannot believe it. That pitch looked high. Apparently, that was right at the letters, so that's out number one. And now Estrada is the back. With one out and the base is still loaded. Scubal due up next. Bottom of the eighth inning. Let's see if Estrada can get this on the infield. Here comes the one ball count and the pitch. 
and Estrada grounds it towards short. The diving play, but there's no throw. Man, he stopped it from getting into the outfield, but the shortstop could not collect himself and throw the ball over to first. So an RBI single for Thyro Estrada, and the Cubs now have a 4-3 lead. And now Scooball comes up, but this is where George Springer is going to pinch in. Springer coming out of the Cub bench to pinch hit for the pitcher's spot. He is coming up with 19 home runs, 58 RBIs, and a 234 batting average on the season. Springer facing Bracco with the bases loaded one out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Cubs now up by one. Here comes the 2-2 count and the pitch to Springer, and it's a swing and a miss for strike three, so that is out number two, and it'll bring up Mike Tauschman. Two outs, bases still loaded here in the bottom of the eighth. Bracco facing Tauschman with a one strike count. Here it comes. Lined into left field, coming in fast. The diving play in left field. That just saved another run. Well, the Cubs do take the one nothing lead. We go now to the top of the ninth inning of a 4-3 ball game. And now, Edwin Diaz will be brought out of the Cub bullpen to pitch the ninth. And we are going to warm up Junior Fernandez, and we are going to warm up Blake Sabin because Diaz is only at 69%. He's not going to have a lot of wiggle room if he allows base runners here in the ninth inning. He is going to face, Diaz is going to face the 7, 8, 9 batters in the Diamondback lineup here in the top, uh, top of the ninth inning, trying to nail down the save for the Cubs. Diaz facing Rojas to lead off the inning. Here comes the 2-2 count. Diaz looking for the sign. And he delivers the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. Diaz with the strikeout to lead off the inning. And that is strikeout number 76 on the season for him. Diaz has thrown 41 innings. Walked 15, struck out 76 with a 198 ERA. Here is Eduardo Escobar with one out and nobody on. Two and two is the count. Diaz delivers. And a swing and a miss for strike three. Diaz with two punch outs now. That was a slider to get the strike out for that one. And now Dalton Varsho is the batter. Varsho coming off the bench with six home runs, 23 RBIs, and a 274 batting average. In the top of the ninth inning, he is pinch hitting for the Diamondbacks for the pitcher's spot. Cubs up by one, top of the nine. Diaz working with a one strike count. Here is the pitch to Dalton Varsho. And a grounder towards second. Picked up by Correa, or by Horner, excuse me. He throws to first and they get him by half a step to end the game. So the Cubs are victorious in a come from behind rally of a victory here in the third game of this series. 4-3 is the score in favor of the Cubs. The Cubs getting four runs on five hits with one error. The Diamondbacks, three runs on eight hits with one error. We are going to see that the Cubs' Brent Suter went six innings, allowing eight hits, three runs, only one earned, with one walk and four strikeouts. Scooball gets the win out of the bullpen, going to six and four. He threw one inning of scoreless relief. Jimenez through an inning of scoreless relief, and Diaz getting his 20th save of the season, throwing an inning of scoreless relief with two strikeouts. Zach Gallen is actually credited as being the player of the game. He threw six and two thirds of three hit, three run baseball with two walks and six strikeouts. I don't understand how that's better than Suter's line, but okay, whatever. So either way, Trevor McGill is tagged with the loss. And the Diamondbacks were, in fact, betrayed by their defense that dropped uh, fly ball in left field, factored in significantly to the Cubs' rally in the seventh inning. So the Cubs pull out the brooms. They sweep this three-game series from the Diamondbacks, running their winning streak up to five. The Cubs are now at 65 and 36 as the Diamondbacks fall to 44 and 57. Thank you for watching Replacement Player Baseball.